I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and today I'm here with Monica from Animal Friends Jokja. How are Hi. you? Yeah, good. How are you? Good, thank you. <laughs> Animal Friends Jokja, tell us about it. Well, um, we're just a small group mm -hmm. and obviously from the name Jogja, mm -hmm. it's actually in Jogjakarta, which is mm -hmm. a, where we are now. It's a town in Indonesia on Java, Java. Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A and lovely place. Yeah. <laughs> we're in the forest at the moment, right near our dog and cat house. Mm -hmm. and Actually, we've only been going since late 2009, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we started out very um, small, uh, and we still are small, but um, we're just six friends um, that uh, maybe were frustrated with um, the situation with animals here in Jogja because there's no groups, or there wasn't any group at that time that would that would help animals. There was uh, one or two that were helping with disasters, but nothing day to day. And and Jog just got a lot of stray cats mm -hmm. and um, some stray dogs. But um, uh, there's a, a, a big problem with eating dogs, mm. people consuming dogs, dog meat, and also um, other animal issues like uh, dog fighting mm. has become it's a really big problem big, here, yeah. and also. Um, uh, the monkey buskers. So yeah, you, know, you see, recently. um, they're doing tricks. Guys, yeah, guys yeah. on the street corners at the traffic lights, mm -hmm. and they have tiny little baby monkeys, mm -hmm. and they're uh, makaka, mm -hmm. um, macaques, long-tailed macaques they use, and they make them wear masks and ride mm -hmm. little bicycles, and they're always chained, and they're always tugging them on the chains. But mm -hmm. that's another issue that, yeah. that we we deal with. So. So um, a few major issues yeah. really. And the, another big one is the dolphin circuses mm -hmm. here. So that's become quite um, quite renowned mm -hmm. um, across the world because Indonesia is one of the only places where they still have travelling dolphin circuses. And you were telling me about that the other day. Um, Monique and I met at a, um, a ve vegan vegetarian event in Solo mm, Square. Right. Yeah. And you were telling me that um, you they steal dolphins from around yep. this area and they travel them for a whole month in a little yeah a little container. well it's actually continually continuously they mm -hmm. stop in a place for a month but yep. then they go on the road again go to another place and then another month and another place and so on so the dolphins are always either in the back of a track mm -hmm. truck or in a small pool mm. yeah and they're not um, bred dolphins from like say in Australia you've got Sea World mm -hmm. where they breed the dolphins and so on. Mm -hmm. They're not like that. They take them wild dolphins mm -hmm. from the sea and chuck them straight into mm -hmm. a swimming pool. Yeah. And then they train them, train them, train them uh, and then straight onto the road. Mm -hmm. And the dolphins only last like two to three years max. Yeah, because Yeah. And um, yeah, so that's another big issue that mm -hmm. we fight for, um, we campaign for. Mm -hmm. But yeah, basically we started um, each of us had our own story. Inna um, was really into um, helping the street dogs that they found and then taking them in. Mm -hmm. um, I was always taking in dogs from neighbours and so on after they moved mm -hmm. because lots of foreigners come here and uh, yeah. they, uh, especially for studying or business, and they'll think they're going to stay here for a long time mm -hmm. and then they go after six months and then by that time they've already got a cat or a dog mm -hmm. and then they have to do something with them. Yep. So we ended up, we end up getting dogs and cats from mm -hmm. people that leave. But um, basically my big thing was what what really um, shook me was when I found, I was just right driving with my husband mm -hmm. along the road and um, along this little um, uh, canal. Mm -hmm. We've got some nice canals in Georgia. And um, I heard this dog screaming and I went and had a look and it was a, a little puppy, only like about three, two, three months, mm -hmm. was hogtied and with raffia and raffia so arms and legs, arms and legs together, together. Yep. and um, around its mouth was raffia as well and mm -hmm. so tight that its mm. nose was bulging out from the blood and um, it was just yeah, screaming mm. um, I don't know how long it had been there but for a long time because of the because of the blood congealed into mm. the, in the nose it was like bulbous and um, yeah it was just lying there next to the stream uh, there was like a lane and then there was a house there were houses on the other side of the lane mm -hmm. so I went there and I, I, I wanted to release it and then the owners were across the road they mm -hmm. came out and said what are you doing what are you doing and I said well what are you doing what's this dog mm -hmm. doing here and 
and they said, oh, it's vicious. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> I knew, puppy. yeah, it was a puppy. Yeah. So I knew um, they were going to eat it, yep. yeah. And I don't agree with eating dogs mm. at all. Yeah. But I also don't agree with them torturing them, you know. It's a bit like the, you know, the case of um, slaughterhouses and how they treat the animals beforehand. I don't agree with the slaughtering or the, the way mm. they treat them. So I wanted to do something. And I tried, but mm -hmm. whatever I tried didn't work. Mm -hmm. I said to them, look, this dog's not vicious, it's a puppy. It's like your little girl there, that they had their little daughter who was only about three standing next to them. I said, you know, how would you feel if someone came along and, and tied your daughter up? Yeah. That's what it's like for this puppy. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, no, 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 it's vicious. And I'm like, it's not vicious. It's, if it tried to snap at you, it was because it's tied up. Yeah. <laughs> but they still wouldn't listen. And I said, look, you know, just let let it go like don't tie it up just mm -hmm. just you know um if you have to tie it up put it on a long length of length mm -hmm. of rope or put it in your house no nope, they wouldn't do it mm -hmm. so then i went to the neighbors and um the neighbors i said how can you deal with the screaming mm -hmm. and they didn't want to do anything either i said let's report it to the to the rt which is the neighborhood um governing uh, body like, like a council ward. yeah okay, okay and they wouldn't do it mm -hmm. and then i thought oh I could have bought the dog mm -hmm. and they said that yeah you can buy it but mm. they wanted like a lot of money mm. for it way more than you know um, you would pay for a dog here mm -hmm. but that wasn't the point the point is if we buy the dog they're just gonna go out and get another yep. one so it was a matter of having to walk away mm. and that, that would have been very hard. that was mm. really really hard for mm. me and I just couldn't stop hearing that dog crying mm. and it was just in my dreams for like ages and then a few days later um, I met up with I Ina mm -hmm. and, and were you I two told, friends before? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd actually been to her wedding not long before yeah. and um, I knew she was an animal lover because um, that, the wedding gift, because everybody gets gifts like souvenirs when you go mm -hmm. to a wedding here and her wedding gift was a video, uh, what we thought were video of, of pictures of the wedding mm -hmm. and then when we got home it turns out it was the earthlings the movie wow, the earthlings that's great. <laughs> yeah so i thought that was really cool and then because of that mm -hmm. i knew because i was more friends with her husband mm -hmm. um through my husband and i'd only met in a couple of times mm -hmm. i think so yeah i didn't know that she liked animals i knew mm -hmm. she had lots of dogs yeah. so then from then i told her my story and she goes well let's do something mm -hmm. i'm like okay what should we do mm -hmm. she goes i don't know let's try something mm -hmm. and she said, I've got a couple of friends, let's get them together. And so we had a meeting at Milas. Mm -hmm. And then Which that's where we started. a restaurant yeah, around here, vegetarian, a vegetarian restaurant. restaurant. Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had our first meeting there. And then within that next couple of weeks, we did our first education program mm -hmm. for children. And tell me about the education programs you do. Because that's yeah. a great way to get the yeah. message out. Well, um, obviously, uh, when you're just first starting, um, there's two ways you can go, it's to rescue mm -hmm. or to education or yeah. both. And we'd already been taking in dogs and cats. The other um, people from the group, uh, Nana and Yanni mm -hmm. and Ellie. Um, Nana and Yanni were already um, taking in stray cats mm -hmm. and sterilizing them with their own money. Mm -hmm. And, um, or sterilizing, that's the Indonesian term mm -hmm. in English, uh, spaying and neutering, yep. um, street cats. And um, Ellie was always fond of animals, but um, she hadn't really done anything. So when we were all together, we decided, yeah, uh, what can we do uh, something different? So we decided education, mm, because cool. you can keep rescuing, but it's not going to change mm. mindset. So we thought with children, yeah. Mm. So we did our first one with the kids in the village near where Nana and Yanni live. Mm -hmm. Um, because they have a lot of cats there so they thought well that's a good place to start mm -hmm. to teach them about animals and that was such a success because until now those children still volunteer for animal friends dog oh, wow. so a from 2000 years, and yeah. early 2010 until now mm -hmm. these little children who are now going into junior high school mm -hmm. they they've been volunteering the whole time that's great yeah mm -hmm. so from that we realized well this is the way we need to go mm -hmm. is education yep. so um, yeah, we just do their children's education program, which is called um, Nature and Animals Are My Friends. Oh, cool. So um, mm -hmm. uh, we have this program where we introduce them to dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. Many children have never touched a cat or a dog before mm -hmm. because children here don't grow up with um, stories or movies and so on about animals like mm -hmm. we do in Australia, yeah? Or I don't know about the kids now, but when I was a kid, mm -hmm. 
we had like Skippy the bush kangaroo mm. and yeah. and all these kind of animal stories and books and so on but that's kind of lacking here mm -hmm. so we thought exposure to animals is the first step yeah. and then um, we wanted to combine it with environmental because mm -hmm. environmental issues because uh, another problem, big problem here is the rubbish. Yeah, yeah the, there's trash everywhere. Mm. People, there's no rubbish collection. Mm. Um, yeah, so uh, people just collect their trash, don't they? And then yeah, burn it. Uh, if you can look around here, there's like piles where people have burned rubbish. Mm. But most, the best way here is to dig a big pit and mm. then put the non-recyclables in the pit. Luckily, mm. uh, Indonesia is great for recycling. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the people here really, really are good at recycling. Mm. So a lot of the stuff we recycle. So we teach the kids to recycle. Sure. Mm -hmm. We have games where they have to uh, distinguish what can we recycle mm -hmm. and what can we not recycle and cool. to have the courage to tell people to pick up their rubbish, mm. things like that. Yeah. yeah, just simple, simple stuff. And then we provide them with a vegan um, snack and mm -hmm. drink. Mm -hmm. So we give them satay bua, which is fruit satay. Yeah. So we have all the different kinds of fruit on a, on a, sat on a bamboo a skewer. skewer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some, with sauté sauce on it? No, just or plain just... fruit. Oh yeah. But mm -hmm. because it's so colourful, mm. then we can also talk about the different fruits mm. and the colours. Because yeah. sometimes we have little kids, sometimes we have bigger mm. kids. So yeah, it's all yeah, it, it's good. all connected. Yeah. yeah. So it's like a kind of a holistic approach, not to uh, about animals and the environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's well, been it's all really connected, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's right. And you're um, also from Australia, like yeah, I am. Yeah. And what do you, what have you noticed is the differences between how people are with animals here Whoa. and in Australia? <laughs> There's Big quite, a, quite yeah. a lot, isn't there? One thing is that a lot of people think that dogs and cats should be caged over here. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. that that's that's the home Normal. for the dog, and that's yeah. the place for the dog and cat. Is you have a cage in your house, mm -hmm. and that's where the dog goes, and they let them out to play every now and again, and then mm -hmm. they basically stay in that cage yeah. for most of their lives and that's considered normal and these people mm -hmm. still think consider themselves pet yeah, lovers, lovers and animal mm -hmm. lovers so uh, we, we we need to do a lot of um, uh, education mm. for just the regular people to change the mindset that animals are like us yep. if you put them in a cage it's like putting them in jail mm. they don't really they get happy. that concept mm. yet so that's one of the big things and uh, many people keep them on chains mm -hmm. outside. Mm. They don't consider animals as uh, companion animals as companions yet. Yep. It's still, um, still property. a property. Yeah. yeah. Um, big trend in breeds. So people buy breeds as a status symbol. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have um, popular breeds. Like a couple of years ago, it was golden retrievers. Mm -hmm. Now it's huskies yep. and Saint Bernards mm -hmm. and also cats like. Um, chinchillas and Persians and all of these animals are uh, long-haired animals I was going to say, be hot for, so hot for them yeah. so uh, a lot of people actually keep their animals in air-conditioned rooms mm. yeah so um, if they have long hair and so on but um, it is a bit of a status symbol here mm. to have a, yeah. a, a, a type of breed so another thing that we try and educate is that animals that they call um, anjing or kuching kampung which mm -hmm. means um, village dogs or village cats yeah, yeah. we try and uh, increase their status in the community uh, yeah. and uh, for example we had a event a couple of months ago called bark in the park mm -hmm. and then we made uh, a photo story competition beforehand for mm -hmm. two months before where we asked people who'd um, adopted or saved a stray mm -hmm. uh, a domestic uh, dog or cat or a um, to write in their story and yeah. give a before and after photo oh, great. and then we call them our heroes like mm -hmm. the animals heroes yeah and then we had a walk of fame for them oh, and lovely. um yeah That's so nice. people that came all came most people that came to the event had bred dogs oh. but then the ones that were glorified mm. were the actual domestic animals yeah. on stage they oh, came cool. up on stage and received yeah. an award, award and so on mm. yeah so That's nice. uh yeah just they little really things that. Mm. that to change the mindset mm. Yep. Yeah, so the children, we start with trying to get them to empathize mm -hmm. that animals yep. have feelings and rights. Mm -hmm. And then uh, for the people that are already um, adults or, or teenagers that have already got animals, mm -hmm. we try and get them to change the way they uh, treat their animals, yep. um, but uh, through a way that they can understand. So yep. we give them education, like watch films together, like mm -hmm. Hachiko or... Um, um, 
yeah, just films where they where animals are part of the home, like Marley yeah. and Me, you know, mm -hmm. like yep. just regular regular films. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about the concept. So, I, you know, have, where do you keep your dog? Is yeah. it inside, outside? Mm -hmm. and, um, does your do you ever think about um, taking the dog for a walk or mm -hmm. taking them on holidays? Yep. Just little things like that. Yeah. Get so, oh, and why not? Yeah. Oh, because. I don't know. Yeah. Well, why not? Mm. Yeah, just try it next mm. time. Oh, yeah. And then, not a, like many times, they become our volunteers because mm. they're so um, moved, I don't know, I moved or yeah. liberated yeah. that actually this animal yeah. can be my friend. It's yeah. not just That's a lovely. thing. Yeah. Mm. So. And so good. tell me about just the day to day of running mm -hmm. somewhere like Animal Friends. How many animals do you have? Okay, here we've got um, in the doghouse right now, we've got, uh, I think. Six on this side mm -hmm. and five on that side, so eleven. And we walked yeah. a few of them. Yeah, the that's other right. Day too. That Through was the fun. river <laughs> and in the river. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. So we've got about uh, eleven over here, and then we've got uh, seven or eight cats here, mm -hmm. and then in the cat house we've got another house uh, in the city, mm -hmm. and they've got around forty cats, but not all of them are um, adopting because. The thing is that once we take in strays, a lot of the time the members end up adopting them. Mm. So it's some of them hard. are mm. for for um, adoption, mm -hmm. and some of them will stay because yep. it's too hard to part with them. Mm -hmm. And especially we we grow uh, close to them, mm. and then having to give them to someone we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's hard. But we do yeah. have a, um, a carer. Mm -hmm. We have uh, three people that work shifts, mm -hmm. four-hour shifts oh, around yeah. the clock in all three places. Yeah and they do the um, cooking mm -hmm. and cleaning and caring, dog walking. Cool. We have volunteers that come and dog walk mm -hmm. um, every day and um, the land is actually, uh, the land and the, and the um, place that we have the animals in is actually owned by some of the members mm -hmm. but uh, we've built structures from donations from mm -hmm. people so um, we have like uh, an organization status, mm -hmm. a group status, a non-profit organization status and so um, anything that becomes part of AFJ mm -hmm. will remain part of J yeah. AFJ so the land has been leased to us mm -hmm. for an indefinite period of time. Oh, good. So that's all safe, mm -hmm. um, no one can kick us off and luckily we're in this beautiful place. Yeah, we have, um, uh, land that's, that's uh, got rivers on each side mm -hmm. so we can protect the animals. Mm. Um, because we do a lot of campaigns, mm -hmm. we have to be careful about people coming here yeah. because uh, we have enemies, if you mm -hmm. like, um, because of the campaigns we do. Because a lot of the um, circuses, dog fighting, and so on are run by quite wealthy mm -hmm. and uh, people yeah. uh, who haven't have a, make a lot of money out of mm -hmm. those businesses. So, yeah, so yeah. we have to be careful. So mm -hmm. uh, generally, not many people know where we are. Yeah, we screen people when they come. Yep. The adoption, we have a very strict adoption process. Mm. It's like adopting a child because mm. <laughs> we consider them our children. Yeah. A lot of the animals have uh, gone through great trauma, mm. so we want them to go to houses or and families yep. that are suitable for them and that they can be their forever home, mm. we call it. So, um, not just to be passed from hand to hand mm. as people do here mm -hmm. with their animals. And then. Um, for day-to-day uh, -day running, we have Ina, she's our program manager, mm -hmm. she's the only person that's actually paid mm -hmm. to work for AFJ yep. and she's amazing, she does so much work mm -hmm. and she's got a real heart for it, so yep. she does, she, she, she's like a, uh, what do you call it, yeah she's like a fireball, she mm, gets cool. into the, she makes sure all the campaigns get, um, go through and actioned. Um, and yeah, the everything else is done by volunteers. I'm actually um, Australian volunteer for mm -hmm. international development, okay. so I'm supported by the government of Australia actually. Mm -hmm. So I can be here uh, and focus on the work here mm -hmm. rather than um, other work. So how yeah. could other Australians do that? Is that oh, easy it's very to easy. Do? Yeah, yeah, you can just um, uh, go onto the website mm -hmm. for Australian volunteers for international development mm -hmm. and um, click on there, and you can find all the information. Oh, cool. Yeah, so. Um, you actually get uh, find a host organisation. And how can someone get involved with Animal Friends, Friends Georgia? Georgia? Well, um, we've got what a website, mm -hmm. we've got Facebook, and we've got email. So you can contact any of those. Mm -hmm. There's actually a downloadable form mm -hmm. on the website yeah. www.animalfriends.org, mm -hmm. and you click on there, and then you can fill out the form and then yeah. send it back, and then. 
uh, every time we have an event or um, usually we have like a, a weekly meeting where mm -hmm. we invite people or you can come to our English class because I yeah. teach English for volunteers mm -hmm. as a bit of a give something back mm -hmm. yeah and also it helps us too because they can help with translations mm. we get a lot of brochures from uh, and uh, we give we've got permission to use other animal welfare groups mm -hmm. around the world, brochures yeah, and, and downloadable materials, mm -hmm. but of course we have to change them to Indonesian, so they can help with that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. so. yeah. and um, our volunteers are amazing, mm -hmm. they're great, so I don't know, you've met a few of them now, yeah, yeah. yeah. and they're really, we've got some, a core group of volunteers that are very dedicated, um, a lot of them actually didn't like animals before, mm -hmm. or didn't know about animals, but just from coming to a stand, like, uh, we're really, really grateful that uh, Indonesian Vegetarian Society, they allow us to have stands whenever mm. they have an event Good. and people come along, they ask questions and just by one-on-one -on -one talking mm. a lot at the time we can get people to uh, understand what we're doing mm. and think about, oh yeah, I saw a dog like this or I mm. saw a cat like this and yeah, why are there so many cats on the street? So once we explain to them, mm -hmm. a lot of times they're interested, they come yeah. along to an event yeah. or a volunteer volunteers group and yeah, they're in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. Yeah, it's That's really great. good. Yeah. And you've got these little money boxes too yeah. that have at places, yeah. little turtles. Yeah, we've got they're turtles and, and pigs, mm -hmm. like um, piggy banks and mm -hmm. ducks and chickens and they're made of clay mm -hmm. and um, we get them here, near here there's a um, Pottery Village. Oh yeah. Yeah, so we can get them there. So they're locally made, mm, and good. one of our volunteers paints them up, mm -hmm, and then nice. we put them in different places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's so a good that's way just a to small raise way. a bit of yeah. money. Mm -hmm. We also have a, a school where all the kids they donate uh, money every week from their pocket money. Oh, that's. Cool. And then once a year we go to the school and we have a bit of an event, mm -hmm. and then they um, all, all the kids get certificates. Mm. And yeah, so that's another way. Mm, that's but yeah, fundraising is. Um, usually through creating empath empathy, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't really ask a lot for, we don't mm -hmm. really ask for money, mm -hmm. uh, we don't go around soliciting money, yep. uh, we have a website and mm -hmm. we put up stories about yep. the animals we've rescued, the programs mm -hmm. we have, and if people are interested they can donate, yeah. but most of it um, we donate ourselves, uh, the people that are involved, we get uh, a few donations from some uh, people that really care about animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we don't have any affiliations yeah. with uh, other organizations except for um, Jakarta Animal Aid Network. Mm -hmm. They give us a lot of information and yeah. help us out. They helped us out a lot when we were first starting. Mm -hmm. And um, we're just getting involved with um, some uh, campaigns mm -hmm. with um, Jan and also B uh, Bawa, Bali mm -hmm. Animal Welfare Association. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Um, it's good to work together with other groups. Yeah, so. networking is really mm. good. And the big thing that we're working on now is to change the laws. Um, yeah. Because there is a, a penal code or a, a criminal code mm -hmm. against um, harming animals. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, and there's also one for, um, there's actually a law against uh, animal trade, mm -hmm. uh, wild animal trade and so on. So but they're not very strong and yeah. they're not implemented. Yeah. So right now we're in the process, we've been in the process for two years now trying to change these laws <laughs> or get them to be implemented. Mm. And that's actually coming to a crux at the moment, mm. coming to a head and we're really happy because we had a great workshop mm. with the government, the police departments, the army, the courts and um, the, the justice system. Mm -hmm. And Good. it looks like they're going to get on board. Mm -hmm. we've, we've just sent out um, uh, proposals from a mem uh, memorandum of understanding and mm -hmm. use to get them to actually socialise the laws to their people mm, so that when we report something mm. they'll actually something do something. Mm. Because mm. until now it just gets stymied either at the police station mm -hmm. or at the courts. It doesn't actually get past that. So mm. now we've got them on our side. So mm. cool. hopefully, yeah. Good luck. We just got, um, I think Ina just went last week to, or oh, a couple of days ago to the head of the police mm -hmm. and they said that they're ready to help us. Okay. So yeah, that's great news. That sounds good. Yeah. Sounds like the wind is changing. It is, it is. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and we've only been doing this for two years. Yeah. Started off with yeah. six friends mm. and um, our big thing is 
to tell people that you can do it too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Empower Don't, other people yeah, when we get things happening. That's yeah. right. Because we get a lot of people that just want to bring their dog or cat to us. Yeah. And we just say, uh, why don't you do something? Mm. And then they generally do. Oh, Once we explain it to them and show yeah. them how, then they do it. Yeah, so, that's good. Yeah. Good news. Yeah. Keep up the great work. We will. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for giving us the opportunity. Mm, no problem. And <laughs> yeah. thank you, Monique. And okay. see the website for more information and yeah. to help out. And see vivalavegan.net for more interviews.